Welcome back to the Ultron Technology Day, where we are having a host of very interesting discussions on the future of technology and how it will affect us. My name is James Francis from Brainstorm Magazine. This event is in partnership with Brainstorm Magazine, where we are going to explore how business, society and technology come together. Uh, before we jump to our topic, I just want to uh, remind our audience that you can submit questions through the app. We will have a presentation section and then we will get to questions and answers. And this is a very good one, a very interesting one. The future of customer experience, or more specifically, how do we take customer experience at the call center level and introduce it to these new technologies? We are going to talk about chatbots. We're going to talk about data. We're going to talk about a whole new way of how we approach the customer. And joining me today from Altron People Solutions, we've got Daryl Marcus next to me as the head of business development and customer experience enabling technologies. Thank you. And then we also have Eshmal Mpabanga. He is a conversational AI practice lead also at Altron People Solutions. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to start off with a presentation from Daryl and then we'll kick into the questions. So please, Daryl. Thank you. Thank you, James, and uh, welcome everybody to what hopefully will be a really exciting 40 minutes together as I unpack what we refer to as the future customer experience. My intention today over the next uh, 20 minutes or so is to really unpack the journey, the journey we're going on and how customer experience is evolving and changing you know, as the world changes. And I think there's no denying that, if anything, the last seven months have shown us that the world has fundamentally changed and digital transformation is no longer what I refer to as somewhere as an appendix or slide 13 but something that needs to happen today. Uh, the way we engage with, with enterprises, whether it's retail, whether it's contact centers, has fundamentally changed post, uh, post COVID. So, um, you know, with that, let me grab that quickly. I'm gonna start the journey and we're gonna look at what are some of the key drivers underpinning the future, com uh, the future of customer experience? Um, how has the world changed? How has business changed? We're then gonna look at, you know, how has the consumer changed and how the consumer channels have changed? And then we're going to evolve into what does it mean for us as an enterprise and how do we deliver the customer experience that our customers today are, 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 are expecting of us. Um, so fundamentally, at a start, our, our worlds are built on conversations. The way we communicate with family, the way we communicate with friends, the way we communicate to each other in business and colleagues, the way we communicate in life, the way we have our customer experience are all fundamentally built on conversations. And that needs to be the driver that underpins the future of, of, of customer experience. It's all about how we converse with customers and how customers are able to converse and have conversations with, with us. But I think the first thing we need to acknowledge is how the customer has changed as a driver of what's happening in the economy and how business has changed. So we refer to something as the on-demand economy. Companies like Uber, for example, expose the consumer what it means to be in an on-demand world. The fact that Uber wrap themselves around us as the customer, they know exactly where we are, they know exactly where their vehicles are. Once you put your address in, they know where to take you, they know how long it's gonna take you. It's a very seamless, a very quick experience. In fact, I go so far as to say often, when you get out of an Uber, it's actually free until you check your, 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 your email on your phone. It shows you how seamless they've actually made that whole payment uh, gateway and the whole payment initiative completely seamless, that unless you check your phone post that environment or post your, your, your drive, you actually haven't even paid for it. So the other thing which I'll, I'll pause for a second, and I like to look at myself as a market of one, but someone who's living a world as we live in today. And you know, something which, which I think for me is, we're seeing very often how customers are, are, are adapting these technologies so quickly and so seamlessly. And I use my seven-year-old as an example. So my seven-year-old used to be a couch potato. He used to sit on the couch watching TV for hours and hours a day. Um, someone said to me, I should consider looking for an Apple device to make my TV smart. Um, I went into a, uh, a store, I'm having a chat to the sales guy. He said to me, hey, don't go for an Apple, why don't you try the uh, DSTV now? Plug it into your decoder and you'll have your, your, your DSTV on demand. Fantastic, bought the device, went home, plugged it in. That night, my kids were sitting watching TV. 24 hours later, I walk into my house and my little one, who's normally a couch potato, sitting, says to me, dad, nothing to watch. I need that, I need you to plug your, um, your, your thing in. I said to him, but, but Gabriel, you've been watching TV all day, every day, for hours. Why suddenly are you not enjoying the TV? He says, no, I don't want to watch those programs I don't like to watch. I only want to watch the things that I can choose. Within 24 hours, he became an on-demand customer. That's his expectation today. And uh, when he engages with, 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 with whoever he engages with, he wants it to be on-demand. He wants it to be seamless. He wants it to be fast. He wants it to be see, uh, simple. And I think the word that encapsulates this entire slide is the customer wants that service to be convenient. The, expe the expectation today is a convenient customer experience. 
We then look at the customer and how, how the customer has evolved today. We live in our devices. I mean, there's no denying. I mean, uh, you know, you walk around, you see people today looking down at their devices all the time. You can't go into a meeting today uh, without people, you know, being on their device during a meeting. Even at home, you see, we're seeing in families how we live on our devices today. And there's, you know, there's no denying that the customer today is working off that device. They're spending 90% of their time in digital or interactive channels. What does that mean for us? There's a massive, massive growth in, in how the consumer is now you know, consuming information through their device. We're seeing it in social media. We, we, we're seeing things like the, the massive rise of, you know, sort of um, WhatsApp, um, Instagram, TikTok. These are, are channels that people are using every, every day to engage with consumers. There's a frightening stat that says that by 2022, 88% 80, of our banking interactions will happen through our mobile device. That's frightening. You know, we then look and we say, well, many consumers today, being digital means being social. In other words, I want to converse with my family, friends, and my brands in my social channels. And we're seeing that. Just consider how many times a person would use, you know, use, use their mobile device to make a purchase. Um, how many times a person will use their mobile device to search for brand information, whether it's online or, or in social media? In fact, 5% of the people in EMEA say that they can't live without social media. So we're seeing how the, the customer is now evolving and the customer is changing and the way they want to consume information is moving into this digital world that lives in the palm of, in the palm of our hand. So critical today in terms of their customer experience is the customer expects to be engaged in their preferred channel of choice. There's a whole lot of logos on the slide over here, but I think we can all resonate with those logos that make sense to us and things that we use every day to communicate to the family and friends, whether it's WhatsApp, uh, Instagram, um, in-app messaging to communicate with the brand, Apple Business Chat, Google RCS, um, Twitter and social media. These are all channels that the customer expects to be engaged on. What does that mean for us? Is the customer journey is now evolving. The customer journey is often starting in these digital channels and moving into some of the more traditional channels. The expectation of the customer is we need to meet that customer in their preferred channel of choice. But it doesn't end there. And I think when we, when we look at customer experience, we can no longer just look at it from a customer care point of view. Today, because we're working in these asynchronous two-way channels, we have the ability to offer a lot more to that, to that customer. The customer is now looking for beyond customer care, I want sales information, I want marketing information, be proactive, engage with me, don't wait for me to, to, to call you, why don't you call me? Why don't you engage with me? Why don't you make me aware of something that would make sense to me? Make me aware of something, uh, of something new from a sales point of view or from a marketing point of view. But again, it doesn't end there. Because the customer journey is moving across all these different channels, we as businesses need to meet that customer in a touch point of choice and make it easy, simple, and again, convenient for that customer to engage with the enterprise. What does that mean for us? So, for example, we, we use techniques um, of trying to move from synchronous channels to asynchronous channels. Something like moving from a telephone call uh, to, to messaging. We call, that, we, we call that IVR deflection. Moving a consumer from a synchronous channel like a contact center into a messaging channel which is asynchronous, persistent, and keeps a constant flow. For the same token, we talk about searching. So we've all done searches on Google. Um, you, know, you do a search for a company, it comes up with buttons that says, call us, directions. Why not add a link in there now that says, message us. Give that consumer the opportunity to engage directly with you from wherever that customer journey started. We're doing the same thing today with email. Email is a synchronous channel. Historically, it's a really inefficient channel in many organizations. We're able to move that consumer and deflect them from an email into a messaging channel um, like WhatsApp. One of our partners shared a story with me recently which really resonated. and said to me, they're working with a bank in Europe who is now dropping a QR code onto, all the, on the, onto the back of all their cards. I thought, what an ingenious way to engage with the consumer. Nothing worse, you, you, you add an ATM, something goes wrong, and then you start looking around and saying, well, how do I get hold of this bank? Do I need to find their call center? I'm in a panic, something's happened, I don't want to wait in the queue. Why not allow the consumer to scan the QR code and launch into a messaging channel immediately? Simple, fast, convenient. That's the expectation to the other consumer, meeting them on all these different channels, moving them into the channel that makes sense for them and for you as a business, and moving that into what we call that, 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 that messaging and, and, and conversational world. So, so how has this world evolved? And, and, and as a business, how do we look at what's happening from the customer experience point of view and build that into our, into our business? I'm sure we can all look at the slide and it makes sort of sense. We started off with a web strategy many years ago. Um, I remember a time when apps came out and there was a school of thought that said apps will replace the websites. Well, that didn't happen. We still have websites. We still have apps. Then we had this whole social thing coming, uh, coming at us. You know, uh, like I said, a lot of people feel that being digital means being social. 
how do we engage with consumers in these social channels? Just one look at you know, how many users are using Facebook kind of shows you how important it is to have a social strategy. But where does the rubber hit the road when it comes to a, conversa uh, a customer experience? It's how do we now have a conversational strategy? How do I engage with my consumer or my customer across all these different channels to provide a seamless customer engagement, a consistent customer engagement, meeting that customer, whether it's on the web, whether it's in in-app messaging, whether it's social media stretch, uh, messaging, or whether it's just you know, messaging in a messaging layer, let me provide all those things to the customer. The customer expects that. In fact, I'll go, I'll go as far as saying that um, if you don't start to evolve your business, and start to acknowledge that this customer is uh, moving on into different channels and it has a different expectation when it comes to receiving on-demand services. In time, you will, your business will become, um, you know, you know, will become irrelevant. And it's not me who's saying that. Your customer is going to tell you that because the customer is going to be trying to engage on their channels, unable to resolve the queries that they want to try and resolve with you, you know, um, in, in their preferred channels of choice. So how have we seen this evolution of the customer experience? First thing we started off, you know, you know from a, um, a, a world of what we refer to as web chat. That was back in 1997. In fact, um, you know, we, we work with a partner that invented web chat, so it's been really exciting to work with our partner live person in understanding the evolution of this customer experience. But web chat, for all intents and purposes, was very much a synchronous channel. It had a start, it had an end. And if anyone on, this, you know, on the webinar has shared a similar experience with me, there's nothing more frustrating going into a website, for example, starting a web chat conversation, you don't get an immediate response, you start playing on or opening up other tabs, doing other work, then you remember, oh man, I had a conversation going, pause, go back to the tab, and you see a little message there that says, sorry, uh, we tried to reach out to you, we didn't hear from you, we've closed this conversation, please start it again. That evolved into messaging. Messaging is what we do every day with family and friends on something like WhatsApp. Now WhatsApp starts a conversation and that conversation continues in asynchronous fashion in my margins. Pretty much when I was setting up the, uh, uh, you know, for today, James and I had a number of conversations. The conversation would start in the morning and that conversation would go throughout the day and sometimes into the following day. Never had a start, and never had an end, and both of us were engaging in our margins in our time that was convenient to us. That was the birth of messaging, and that's gonna be the future of their customer experience. I wanna move from something that, which I'm, I have to work with in your margins, to something that works within my margins, and there's a persistent conversation, a asynchronous conversation across their customer journey. We then saw the evolution of AI, buzzword. Um, but very important, we started seeing the, the, the birth of things like conversational commerce, conversational, um, you know, conversational experiences. How do we use AI to drive that customer experience on the front end? How do we use AI to manage our queues in the contact center? How do we use AI to interrogate databases in the back end and present that to a customer or an agent to make that a more seamless customer experience, to make that engagement a lot easier, either for the customer and, 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 or, and or the agent? And I refer to the agent quite specifically because very often we talk about automation, AI, and chatbots, but we think about them on the front end of the business. Very often, the inefficiencies are actually sitting in the business itself, are sitting with the agents. So why not have what we refer to as an agent assist bot? The ability to push information to the agent to guide and assist that agent to resolve their customer query on the front end. The last part is probably you know, the, the essence of what we're talking today is the future customer experience in our world is understanding intent-driven conversations. If I could read a customer's mind, I could provide a hyper-personalized service to that customer but I can't read their mind. What I can do is try and understand the intent. If I understand the intent up front, I can map that to a user experience, and importantly, I can then map that to a back-end process on my side. At the end of the day, all of that is driving a seamless customer engagement on the front end and driving your, your customer experience for that customer. Pushing information conversationally between agents, between chatbots, pulling information from the back end, presenting it. If you understand the intent up front, you can drive a, a, a real hyper-personalized conversation on the back end across a number of the, 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 the previous channels that, uh, that I've mentioned a little bit earlier. So providing the customer experience on the one end is fantastic, but I'm gonna take a few seconds now just to try and unpack some of the tools that we would use in order to make that a seamless customer engagement and drive that CSAT and drive that customer experience on the front end. The first thing I mentioned was having the ability to meet that consumer or their customer on their channel of choice. And I put a couple of logos over there and I think I've spoken at length around some of the channels that we use. The big one at the moment in South Africa for us is WhatsApp. Again, just a note out there, just because a channel is available to pump messaging into it and engage with the consumer, doesn't mean you need to be in that channel. Make sure you're constantly evaluating 
your customer journey and what makes sense in which channels, especially when it comes to an authentication point of view. There's a, a, you know, just be aware out there, the channel might be available, but very often we need to make sure we have a trusted conversation, make sure that channel supports the authentication required from your business and a risk and compliance point of view that you can actually authenticate and drive personal information in these channels. The other option you have is to move conversations between channels. Maybe start a conversation in a less secure, if I can call it that, channel, move that into a more secure channel, whether that's in your app or in something like Apple Business Chat where we're seeing massive growth in the US market at the moment. The next thing is the platform intelligence. And I spoke a little bit earlier around um, the importance of understanding customer intent. You need to have a platform that underpins all these things. How do I understand that intent up front? How do I map that to user experience? In other words, how do I take the customer's intent? How do I pass that either to automation, being a chatbot, or to an agent? Or maybe do I actually go through automation and start pulling information from the back end? Do I provide the customer with automation in the chatbot? Or do I maybe provide the agent in the business with information to help guide their conversation and resolve that particular query? The next piece of this puzzle over here is that what we refer to as conversational design. Um, within our world, we, 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 we do have a, a, a platform studio called Conversation Builder that, that we build. Um, but the important thing over here is when you start building your chatbot, um, try and make sure that that chatbot sits in your organization. At the end of the day, we're speaking about the customer experience and why it's relevant to the customer experience. We want to have the ability to move seamlessly between the chatbot and an agent. We call that the human AI tango. And I fundamentally believe from a customer experience point of view, that's the golden thread. Having the ability to acknowledge and say that I do have automation, but if my, my, my chatbot can't resolve a customer query, let me move that seamlessly to an agent to try and resolve that customer query, and the agent can always move it back into the, um, into the, uh, into the bot if, if necessary. But at the end of the day, when the customer engages with the organization, whether it's through a chatbot, or through a human being, or a combination of both in that human AI tango, Let's make sure we can resolve that customer's query because that's what's impacting the customer experience. Just a side note over here, um, we also work with an open platform. So, you know, other companies have really made big investments in these, uh, you know, in chatbots. We have something called a BYOB, which is bring your own bot. We can plug it in and try and work on that seamless customer engagement together. Um, the next piece of the puzzle is the conversation management. You've got your chatbots, you've got your agents, but how do you now orchestrate the conversations between the two? How do you move conversations between the agents? How do you manage your queues? How do you maximize your efficiencies in an asynchronous world, which is very different from a one-to-one -one synchronous world? Because your agent, your conversations can be a lot longer. You're able to do a lot more, but you need the, the AI in the background to manage those conversations. Um, the, from an op operational uh, um, expertise point of view, the beauty of being in a uh, you know, in an event like today uh, with Eltron is, as a group, we have a lot of these, a lot of we, we have a lot of these skills sitting within the company that can actually guide you down this conversational strategy. We have expert um, expert consultants who can guide you through artificial intelligence, advanced analytics. Um, I mentioned earlier, um, one of my colleagues I really enjoy spending time with, Andrew, is presenting today. How do you secure yourself in these messaging layers? What are some of the things we need to be aware of? Critically, critically important. Uh, conversation analytics, we all know how important reporting is in, the, is, in, is in the contact center, historical reporting. The next phase of this is what we refer to as real-time customer sentiment analysis. Um, our, our, our partner and our partner platform have got a, you know, a huge amount of experience in this world is um, looking and saying, well, how do we in real time understand the customer sentiment and then action on it? So if a person's, for example, speaking to a chatbot and it happens to me quite often and I'm saying, this isn't working for me, uh, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, let me speak to an agent. Let me chat to an agent, or this is really sending me in circles, rather than keep me in that, in that maze and keep me in what we refer to as that automation maze, sp seamlessly pass me to an agent. If I'm having the same conversation in a negative sentiment with an agent, pass me up into a, into a supervisor. At the end of the day, it's all about that, that customer experience. I touched earlier on the data privacy and security. Um, our partner, uh, we went through a, a quite a lengthy process at, at Eltron to choose a partner. We, 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 we've chosen and selected live person as a partner. Um, and one of the reasons why is because they work with some of the biggest you know, financial services companies in the world. So security and data privacy is inherent in their, in, in their DNA. They've done it, they understand it. Um, and the last piece of that is delivering variant value on RI. Um, very often I get asked, well, where does one start and what does something like this actually cost? And I'll say, well, cost is a relative term. You know, at the end of the day, if you're going to deploy a technology because it's sexy, well, the technology will be as, you know, um, as relevant as long as it is sexy until the next sexy thing comes along. But if you deploy a technology that's really driving your ROI and your business value, and it's driving your, 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 your customer satisfaction, it's driving efficiencies in your operation, it's adding to you know, agent experience and minimizing agent nutrition, then you start to speak a language that's actually making sense, not just for the customer and the customer experience, 
but for your business. And I think the two of those need to work in a, in a, in a harmonious environment. So as I mentioned on a few occasions, what is the future of customer experience? The customer expects today to get a seamless customer experience anywhere, anytime, and in any channel. We believe the future is built on conversations, and if I extrapolate that a little bit more, we say let's make life easier um, for the customers and the brands by providing secure and trusted conversational AI solutions. I thank you for your, uh, I thank you for your, your, your time in the presentation, and uh, I've got my colleagues over here, and as I mentioned earlier, colleagues you know, that sit within Eltron and also partners, where we'd love to go down this journey with you, and is there anything that you'd like to unpack further? Our details are there, please feel free to reach out and we'd love to support you on your conversational uh, strategy and journey. Thank you very much, Dylan. And uh, I, I can completely, I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Daryl. <laughs> I can completely associate with the idea of a, of a messaging thing. I found I use WhatsApp more and more. For example, if my ISP is not working well, jump on WhatsApp and through the day, you can channel through that. Now, we, as I can say, have prepared questions, but immediately into the deep end, we have a question from the audience. They would like to know your conversational AI solution in terms, of, can it integrate with all social media channels, websites, and SMS, and is there a limit to the number of channels that it can be integrated with? I'll pose it to both of you. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, the short answer is yes. Um, we have a solution called Social Connect, uh, which allows uh, our, our uh, um, solution to plug into all, so all, all social media channels. I think Daryl alluded to it earlier. Um, your channel of choice is important. And whatever channel that the customer wants to engage the business in, we're able to provide that gateway uh, and that connection, that integration, those APIs that allow a business uh, to be able to connect uh, into those social media channels. I think maybe I can add, and uh, yes. thank you, Eshmael. Yeah, at the end of the day, we see the channel as an entry point. So when it comes to the social media, you have you know, things like web messaging, you have in-app messaging, which are sort of you know, in-house messaging applications. Then you have social media messaging, you have third-party messaging. Um, we have Apple Business Chat, Google RCS. I think at the end of the day, and I mentioned earlier, just because the channel's there and available doesn't mean you need to be in it. Um, the important thing is, is, is having the ability through a partner, and our partner has all those interactions, but the ability to integrate aggregate all those channels into one platform. And that's where it becomes you know, really, a really strong value add is whether your consumer is starting the journey in Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, uh, Line, Apple Business Chat, from your agent point of view, it's a seamless customer experience. They're always responding from one place. And what you're talking about there though, we, we're talking about seamless, we're talking about multiple points of engagement. And a few years ago, this was called omni-channel. Are we talking about the reorientation of the omnichannel concept with new technologies in it? That's, that's a great question, James. So yeah, um, traditionally we looked at a, a contact center world as an omnichannel world, but I think that's evolved now. Um, we're moving into what we refer to as a conversational world. And whether it's conversational experiences or conversational commerce or uh, conversational AI or conversational cloud, what we're seeing is a fundamental move away from traditional omnichannel into a lot of the messaging channels because the journey is often starting in the messaging layer. Um, we still know that the consumer wants to use the telephone but we'll, and we'll, we'll avail that. But we can move the conversation into a conversational world looking at those digital interactive channels um, but still supporting some of your traditional omni-channel um, uh, omni uh, uh, channels that we'd used in the past. Because it does sound like it's an expansion of a capability. But here, Ishmael, I get a little bit worried because when I think of a chatbot or a virtual assistant, I think of what I have on my phone and it's often just a glorified way to take me to a website. Mm -hmm. How is this a step further from that paradigm? So it's an enhancement, um, is how I would put it. And, and firstly, there's a big difference between chatbots and messaging when you think about it. There's two types of chatbots. You get the normal chatbots and then you get the AI-driven chatbots, right? Where the normal chatbot are the ones that use a predefined workflow. And when you look at uh, AI chatbots are the ones that use uh, machine learning and NLPs, which is natural, pro natural language processing, in order to understand what the user or customer is trying to say. And I think what you're alluding to and what we drive as a strategy across businesses is the conversational piece. How do we get a business to understand that uh, that they can actually build intents within their framework, within their chatbots to understand what the user's saying. So you can then um, really understand and get to remediate a user's que a question or a query in real time across multiple channels uh, in a conversational way. And I think that's the biggest difference that uh, people need to understand, especially in business as well as customers alike. A question from the floor, uh, from the, sorry, from our audience is, can you give some examples of industries where this would be a very good application? 
uh, obviously customer services everywhere, but are there any, are there any specific areas that really stand out that they should be looking at this technology? Carol? Yeah, I think it's another great question. I think safe to say that you know any industry or vertical, irrespective of which one it is, that's enga engaging with either customers or employees, there's relevance in this. We're seeing you know big growth historically in the likes of financial services, in FireServe, in, uh, in 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 healthcare. To, you know, utilities in the U.S. Is, is big to name a few. But with that being said, we're seeing this evolving because we're seeing the evolution of the customer engagement. Uh, so where we've traditionally had what we refer to as synchronous channels or communication, we sort of ended with telephone and then some channels supporting it like email, maybe chat, SMS. We're seeing the evolution across the board, you know, across verticals into these new messaging layers. Is how do I make life easier for, for my customers, for my employees to engage with me by offering these, these new, new channels. So I think this is, you know, I think it's going to become prevalent across all industries. In fact, um, there's a, a stat that was quoted uh, last year that Gartner predicted that by 2020, 85% of our interactions would happen with a chatbot. Um, unfortunately, we are in 2020, and we are, you know, sort of sitting towards the the end of 2020. Yeah. But I think this is going to it's going to become prevalent. I think the way we, we engage with an enterprise is going to fundamentally change, um, and it's going to start moving into, you know, more of the conversational, messaging, digital first type of engagements. And I think James, uh, uh, you can look at it this way. Uh, what do you do? And I think the audience um, can relate. What do you do every day? Uh, you do your banking. You go to the grocery store, you um, go to the retail store to buy clothing for your kids or whatever it may be. And you want to be able to do that in the comfort of your own home, in your channel of choice, uh, using a conversational solution that allows you to have a discussion as and when you please and not lose context of that discussion. And those are the biggest industries, I believe. I mean, I come from a banking background, so I understand what customers are trying to achieve, what customers need. And I also understand what banking, uh, what the banks are trying to achieve. And by uh, merging the two, and understanding fundamentally where conversational commerce is going, I think it actually gives the users a better uh, leg up in a digital world. I'd like to build on what you guys said there, just a question of my own. We, we're currently talking about the customer as external. Mm. Uh, how would this apply to, let's call them internal customers, so internal company processes for employees? I imagine ask getting leave permission from HR. Are these also use cases we can apply in there? Absolutely, um, and again, it's all about making, uh, you know, the, the the engagement, a convenient, seamless, easy, fast engagement. Uh, I remember a little year, uh, quite a few years ago, I was working on an opportunity in, with a US company, and we were, we were asked to do some work with a really big financial services entity, and at the time we got really excited because we thought, this is gonna be our, un, you know, our entry point into the organization, and the first application, or the first use case they came back to us with, password reset. So, I mean, <laughs> to answer your point, you know, anywhere where you can build efficiencies into, into, into the environment, that's why I was quite specific earlier saying, we can look at it from the customer point of view, but there's absolutely a play from an employee point of view. When it comes to things like HR, as you mentioned, um, and, and applying for leave, I'm sure if we had an HR ex, you know, exec with us in the room over here, said, what's one of the banes of your life? That's a taking that repetitive call when people phone me and say, hey, how much leave have I got? Can I take leave? Why not automate it? It doesn't need to go through an, uh, an HR person. And the reality is, let the HR person actually do the more complex work that they, that they employ to do. So whether it's external or internal, I certainly believe there's a use case for, for both as long as you're building efficiencies. And I suppose importantly is resolving for, for inefficient challenges. And let's quickly then look at the technology itself, because there's a lot of potential mm. on how we can apply it from just automating processes to having very rich engagement experiences. Ishmael, there's a lot of hype around chatbots. Uh, and you've alluded earlier, Daryl, in your presentation, some companies even tried building their own and ran into problems. How do you, how do you, how do you cut through the hype? especially because we've gone from not zero to 100 very quickly on this concept. So the first thing is, uh, if I look at it from an organizational perspective, is don't build chatbots outside of your environment. Um, that sort of takes away a lot of pain points. Uh, you're then able to scale within your business. You're then able to understand the customer journey and plug it in correctly uh, and actually have a transformational journey over a period of time in order to get to your end point. Right? Is there really a hype, uh, you could say? I mean, Daryl and I always talk about the Gartner hype cycle where it was all about chatbots and then all of a sudden uh, we got to a, a, a peak uh, and then it sort of dived down and didn't go any further. Uh, and what we're trying to achieve is to ensure that that hype is not just sustained but becomes 
a fundamental reality within a business and for users themselves, because they're asking for it every day. Right? I'm the ultimate customer. I like to see myself as the ultimate customer. I'm an advertiser's dream. Uh, and if I, w if I see a billboard with a pair of shoes, I want to be able to go onto the Nike store, for example, and pay for it, or talk to my bank and see is a capability I can, I can use uh, immediately. So is it really a hype? I think uh, Daryl alluded to it in his presentation. Um, we were alluding to chatbots being prevalent in 2020. We're now in 2020. Uh, but there's now a conversational leg that we now need to incorporate into that environment to ensure that messaging becomes fundamentally entrenched within businesses and in customers' lives. In that conversational leg, Daryl, um, you spoke about this in your presentation, but the difference between chat and messaging, it does seem to me that a lot of mistakes are also made because they confuse the concepts Absolutely. and that this messaging idea is the new evolution. Could you just uh, unpack that a little bit more and how someone would differentiate between what is chat versus what is message and the capabilities of these technologies? Absolutely. So I think, for, you know, the, the key difference between the two is chat is a synchronous channel. So in other words, chat works in margins, it has a start and it has an end. And when that chat ends, if you want to start it again, you need to you, you restart the conversation. Messaging on the other hand is asynchronous and there's a, persis a persistent conversation. So messaging is what we do with the, the likes of sort of WhatsApp. And as I mentioned earlier, you and I have had a number of engage, uh, engagements in the build up to, to today. We'd often start a conversation in the morning and that thread would continue through the day into the evening in our margins. So I would often send you a WhatsApp, I would then go into a meeting, an hour or two later I'd respond to you, you would respond in your time. We didn't have to have a window to start and end the conversation. We allowed the conversation to roll across our convenient times. And that's a big fundamental difference between chat and messaging, is really moving from your, your synchronous to an asynchronous environment that has a persistent conversation and, and holds that, that thread. Um, you know, about you, but one of my biggest frustrations is phoning a call center, not resolve my query, having to phone again and having mm -hmm. to start again. Um, and that journey always restarts, restarts. Whereas, you know, messaging being or, uh, an asynchronous world, it flows, it flows. And I think we'll touch on that in a minute in terms of integration. But first, a uh, question from the audience and for you, Ishmael, but you can both can answer on this. A lot of people are afraid of AI. Uh, they think AI is going to replace their jobs. You guys talk about the human AI tango. I've encountered this. I think they call it uh, collaborative intelligence is another word for it. Why should, if I'm a call center agent, why shouldn't I fear for my job? Why should I invite this? Yeah, I, I get this question all the, all the time. And I have one answer. Upskill, upskill, upskill. There's a massive opportunity for skills development. All right? um, there is a misconception that AI will take over people's jobs. And we're always going to be afraid of that. But until we embrace the capabilities that we at Altron, for example, are providing um, with our human AI tango capability uh, and how our AI machine learning capabilities in our back, back end is actually helping customers. We call it agent assist. It actually helps the agent in the back end to respond to customers by understanding the intent as well. Um, and as well as for the customers as well. I mean, it makes their lives easier. Um, so will jobs disappear? I don't believe so. Um, I've never coded before in my life. I learned to code in a rudimentary fashion recently, but you don't have to have that background in order to build bots, for example, on our live engage platform. Um, and it doesn't take away, you're not, you, will not get, you will not get a letter saying you're losing your job. If the business understands where they're going with their transformational strategy, especially when we talk about conversational commerce and conversational AI, I think it's fundamentally built within how we present it and how we want to go along the journey with you to ensure that jobs are not lost, to ensure that I mean, we hear from the government all the time that it's all about upskilling and skills development and creating opportunities. And we're in that movie. We're hoping to achieve that success with our businesses and our partners going forward. And maybe something to touch on there from our previous conversations is the, from what I understand, the call center agent is not isolated from the development of this bot. They can influence it. They could even possibly build their own. Can Absolutely. you unpack that a little bit more? Please? Yeah, I mean, uh, um, so when you do build a bot, you need to, the agents historically understand customer complaints, customer queries, right? So they fundamentally uh, are at the coalface in terms of what customers' frustrations are. And if you can bring them along the journey at that entry point when you build your chatbot, uh, you're able to build a chatbot that makes sense for your business and one that can remediate the customer's pain points. Um, for the long term. So they're able to build bots uh, using our low-code, no-code framework. 
uh, and, and we encourage that. Um, it's only when you start to get into some deep integration and, and APIs into the backend systems where things can start to get complicated. But I mean, we have teams uh, within our world and within organizations that can assist with that. But initially, uh, it is fundamentally important for us to involve agents in how we build these chatbots so that it makes sense for them, so they can use them uh, uh, to, re to, talk, to talk to customers, as well as the user at, at, the, at the end point on the other side. Um, thank you. An another curveball from our um, uh, audience, and this is for Daryl specifically. Um, how does intent-driven messaging facilitate commerce for business? And I assume that's kind of personalized messaging they point to and maybe driving a certain narrative or a certain, let's call it, sales uh, uh, flow. Uh, uh, the, the word escapes me, but you know what I'm talking about, the process of getting someone there. How does that play into this? This is not just about resolving complaints, is it? Absolutely, and I think it's uh, something I touched on uh, on one of my earlier slides is we often look at the customer experience from a customer care point of view. But because we have these messaging channels at our disposal today, we can really evolve that into, you know, beyond just customer care, looking at things like sales and marketing. So, you know, it, it's a great question. And, and how do you use the intent? Well, if you could read my mind and make my experience a hyper-personalized experience, you can start to offer me things that would make sense to me in that particular moment, something that I was looking for. So, so very often, my intent might not even be in something that I've, I've maybe said. It might be something that's happening in the background. Um, maybe I've have done some searches on a, on, on a website, for example, um, and from that you can start to, to build up an intent that this person's looking to do something. Drive that conversation to me. Be proactive in the, be proactive the, you know, in the engagement. Drive me to where you want, to, to where you want me to be. Um, you know, uh, an, another great example, another, another example of that is, is, is you know, Often um, people engage on a website or an app, and and they, let's say they, they want to make a purchase. They can't get to the end of the, the line. They often bail out, if I can use that word, prior to actually making the purchase. Understand my intent. My intent is to make a purchase. Have targeted web messaging. Message me and say, Daryl, you've got something in your basket, but you haven't been to checkout. Is there something we can we can assist you with? And it might be a simple thing, like you say, yeah, actually, what is your return policy? But I think you know. Intent for us is really exciting because, as I said, if you can understand the customer's intent, it's like reading their mind. If you understand that, you can map that to the customer experience. You can map, you can map it to what makes sense for you. And if it's, a, if it's a commerce world, at the end of the day, you want to drive me from my intent to making a purchase. Make it easy, make it seamless. Give me the tools to make it happen and, and hold my hand along the way. And I think that's where messaging plays a, an important part. All this has so much potential, but we also know there's an underlying building block for this, it's called data, it's called data culture. Uh, it's, uh, the companies that don't yeah. understand their data and yeah. get that right, a lot of us then becomes academic. Yeah. Ishmael, is that a significant barrier and how can they start overcoming it? Because I'm sure a lot of them saying, okay, we want this now, and they don't realize there's a lot of homework in the background. What uh, advice do you have for them? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll kick it off and I'll, I'll let Daryl um, give us his, his uh, thoughts as well. I think data is important. Everything that we do, uh, is data driven. Uh, in order to understand um, volumes, uh, if you want to understand where are your customers, demographics, um, how are you able to uh, personalize a message, for example, on what particular channel, uh, I think you need data fundamentally in order to make informed decisions on how your build is going to be going forward. Um, so do companies understand uh, their data framework? Some do, some don't. Uh, I think those that have a, a, a really robust uh, data framework and and data warehouses really understand how they can how can, how they can move along the messaging journey to, into conversational. Uh, but for me, it's fundamental to how we how we work every day. Daryl, yeah, thank you. So um, uh, another great question, and you know, the reality is when when we at Eltron were looking to to really you know pivot our business and look for partners, one of the things we looked at was can we have a part, can we find a partner that can support us on our journey and expedite our journey and uh, that's how we selected a partner like, like Live Person who have been around doing chat for 20, you know, over 25 years, have a fortune of data across multiple verticals so when it comes to understanding what customers are chatting about, you know, uh, you can't beat that, that, that wealth of experience and having the data to help us expedite those initiatives. So even for example in, um, you know, we mentioned Conversation Builder, Live person have a bot template, which allows you to very quickly go in, use their data, um, use the experience, use their templates to expedite this process, expedite the journey. Because at the end of the day, we're moving at a hell of a pace. Yeah. These things need to happen quickly. Um, and, and I think the important thing is also, you know, we want to support, we want to support customers along that journey. And that's why we have what we call a transformational strategy. 
You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Don't try to build the, build the ocean. Let's start somewhere. Let's tap into the resources we have within yeah. Eltron, within our partners, like a live person. We will guide you on that journey. We, we will build that roadmap with you and use the wealth of experience we have, we have at our disposal um, and data uh, for, you know, um, within our environments. Excellent. Thank you very much. Daryl Marcus, Head of Business Development and Customer Experience Enabling Technologies, okay. and Ishmael Mpabanga, Conversational AI Practice Lead, both from Eltron People Solutions. Thank you for your time today. Thank, Thank you, James. You.